she would travel in from Harris County to go out on what they said is Caspian Drive here in Columbus, Georgia, to spend time with John Robertson Sr. And whatever that relationship is, became a conflict for the son who wanted the attention and the economics of his father instead of him giving it to her. And so part of what we need to find out too is what had John Robertson Jr economically distressed in the first place what was he trying to pay for trying to do was he trying to lead trying to lead some luxurious lifestyle was he trying to get his wife what was the cause for the need for those economics in the first place but when it's said and done this entire situation is scandal on both sides and anytime you start asking these kinds of questions in a place like Columbus, Georgia, where they were kind of doing this lawless kind of policing for a long time, they're going to try to make you look like you're the bad guy. But what I had done was put myself in a position where they couldn't accuse me of anything like this. My whereabouts are accounted for. I was nowhere near Georgia. And so they're always looking for, okay, well, if we can't get this person, well, who else can we blame? That's how they do it here. And so the necessity for making these kinds of documentaries about this stuff is very important. Because how many people are being forced into the legal system and accused of things that are considered immoral by society who are completely innocent? And... Since we have not heard from John Robertson himself yet, since we don't know anything yet in terms of actual testimony, what does that indicate? We do know that the district attorney's office is sitting on this case. We do know that they have been investigating this case. We do know that all of these people were involved in investiga investigating what was going on at that storage facility. They have invaded my privacy. They have taken pictures. They have been eavesdropping and all kinds of other things out there, which would all be illegally obtained information, invasion of privacy, and more. Trying to figure out some kind of way to justify violating people as part of an investigation that doesn't have anything to do with me or the other tenants at that facility. They called everybody and everything into question. They had everybody questioning me. And people weren't going to question you directly, but fortunately, I had a chance to meet some good people who know I don't have anything to do with that, who have seen me interact. I had people following me all around town every day saying damn near anything you can imagine. I had trouble just going to a facility and getting water without being harassed. The police were literally tracking me down the road every place I went, every bridge I crossed, every bank I passed, every convenience or gas station, every convenience store or gas station I passed, just tracking me around town. Sheriff John Dar, he knew. Sheriff Randy Robertson, he knew. Chief Ricky Boren, he knew. The marshal, they knew. Homeland Security, all of them knew. And how are they going to justify taking actions against somebody when they knew that person had no involvement in it? They'll even go so far sometime as saying, well, look, you know, he gave evidence to me no such thing occurred no type of relationship was ever there that way i've been talking to ben who was the assistant who was there before i was there and i had asked ben i said has anyone talked to you about this case have they come to get any information from you because ben was the closest one to him before i came there Ben says they haven't asked him anything. And I think Ben might have been confused about some information, too, because he told me that he saw something on TV that indicated that Colonel had already been through a trial. And I called over to the 
TV station to find out whether or not they ran a story on him and no trial has occurred. I looked in the database at the jail and he's still there. And so Ben has been providing some information that's in contradiction to what's been going on too. I don't know what all that means, but I know they had a real close relationship, a super close relationship compared to other people. And I don't know what all that relationship was composed of. But Ben has been to their home. He's been to Florida. He's been through the whole thing. And I'm going to leave that portion of whatever this story is from that aspect with them. But I wanted to clarify my relationship with Colonel John Robertson so that you can see what's going on here. But the mystery figure in all of this, is the person that he said was his wife, the person he was in this relationship with, this person that they said he was involved with named Leah, the Filipino woman that he went to the Philippines with. What is her knowledge, participation, inclusion, or whatever, in how this has turned out? Why has no mention of her been made? What kind of documentation about this has occurred in the Philippines? What is the relationship between law enforcement here that was built based upon this case to the Philippines? Because a lot of policing systems now are trying to make international connections because a lot of people who end up having trouble in the United States bail out of the country and go to another nation. And so a lot of them have been trying to get ahead of the game and build these relationships with law enforcement systems in other nations. Because a lot of Asian women, Korean, Filipino, Chinese, Japanese, etc., Taiwanese, they end up here because of their relationships that they have had with soldiers. And with the nature of terrorism and the nature of the issues of today, a lot of these law enforcement systems are trying to make interconnections in policing, and I'm wondering if this is a situation where they exploited this guy just to be able to build that international relationship so that in the future, anybody that's associated with somebody in the Philippines, they already have a direct police link and connection to the Philippines as a result of this case. This is exploitation to some degree, at the same time, there is a tragedy. And when it looks like a son killed his own parents, you know, the whole family can disappear as a tragedy because the mom had died years previously. And we don't know how the mother died. That has not been disclosed yet either. But the mystery figure in all this is this person, Leah. Lastly, Colonel John Robertson, Jr. is represented by Richard Hagler, who is a local attorney here. He's in a partnership with Stacy Jackson. Stacy Jackson is an African-American attorney who once held an assistant district attorney position in Muskogee County. He's a former district attorney. Mr. Hagler has been associated with a lot of criminal cases. He has represented a lot of high profile cases here in this community. And all attorneys that represent people in cases like these engage in certain kinds of investigations of a potential suspect population and the relationships that people had with those people that are accused. And so some of the experiences that I have had have come as a result of things associated with the behaviors of attorneys here in this local market. I am here to tell you that you don't have to do anything wrong in Columbus, Georgia for them to target you in that way. You don't have to know them. You don't have to want anything from them. You don't have to owe them anything, nothing. They'll target you. 
Now, Mr. Hagler is a well-respected, experienced attorney in this area. He knows the ins and outs of just about everything that takes place here. He can make the system work for you or work against you. Stacy Jackson had his hands in just about every major case or knowledge of every major case that was pending in Columbus, Georgia during his time at the district attorney's office, from the old cases to the new cases. And every attorney does not use their knowledge of those situations in the best interest of innocent citizens. Some attorneys can get you framed. But ultimately, if we're going to base this on facts and evidence, Randy Long was reported to have no physical evidence associating John Robertson Jr. with the death of his father. He only had some evidence claiming that there was some financial fraud of some kind. And so if they don't have any physical evidence and they've been holding him for two years plus, what exactly is going on with that case? And it's necessary for me to report on this because I'm still at the facility. And I don't want anybody to conveniently plant any evidence near or around me because I don't have anything to do with it. And I don't want them accusing me of anything. I didn't see Colonel engage in anything illegal that I was aware of. Whatever he had going on was something he did exclusively, exclusively to himself or before I had any knowledge of it. And just because you know somebody, just because you've been around somebody, just because they claim you're associated with somebody does not mean you participated in criminal activity with them. But they use claims like that in Columbus, Georgia, to turn the public against you. That's how they kill your audience. That's how they destroy your economics. That's how they scare people. That's how they destroy your public trust so that you can't build the kinds of relationships that you need to build a successful person. It's a dirty...